Hey guys, welcome to the happiest hour where your favorite influencers come to talk about their success in fashion, beauty, love, and life, and how to get you there too. And today I'm super excited. Our first guest is Miss Brittany Xavier from the super popular blog, Riffs and Threads. Your fan base is crazy. Um, she's a super successful entrepreneur, mother, wife, like major oh. roles over here in Queen of <laughs> so OTDs. Sweet. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And it's a super busy time right now, I know, because we're all getting ready for Fashion Week. So really thank you for taking the time to come in, yeah. sit with us, have some cocktails. And see your cute place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome. This is your first time here, right? Yeah, it's so yeah. cute. This is my home, guys. Welcome. <laughs> um, so how are you getting ready for Fashion Week? What is, what is it like preparing? So I am just trying to get all my outfits together. The outfits is the main thing just because there's quite a bit of changes during the day and yeah. a lot of running around. So being organized is key for me. Yeah. So how do you handle that with all the outfit changes? Do you change for every show and every event? It just, it really depends on the show because yeah. if I am wearing something that I want to make sure I'm close enough to get back or if I bring it with me and, you know, yeah. change in the car really quick, it's, it's crazy. It is, it is but crazy. But it is a lot of fun. And then how do you, do you shoot in between? How do you get your OOTDs? Yeah, shooting in between and, because a lot of it is like on the go iPhone, you know. Yeah. Now with Insta Stories this season, it's going to be kind of a little bit different now yeah. because before it was just Snapchat. Right. So now we're going to be doing that and um, Instagram pictures, but also just getting, you know, blog photo recaps and all that. And just, those are kind of like happening as you go. You're just getting those photos. Yeah. But it does take time to sometimes plan like, okay, I got to get in better lighting or you have to kind of yeah. plan a little bit around that. So. Yeah, that's so true. And so you mentioned now we not only have Snapchat to worry about, but we also have Insta stories. How yeah. are you managing the both? Do you post different kinds of material to each? Are you kind of posting the same to both? How do you, how do you do that? I know it can be a little overwhelming with Insta stories just because everyone's following everyone that you yeah. have on your Instagram feed. So I try to keep them really kind of condensed. I don't try to like do all day, every day what yeah. I'm doing. But um, yeah, if there's something fun happening, I'll show that. Or if there's like a blog post, it just kind of depends. But yeah. I'm definitely not narrating my whole day. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how some people do that. I, I don't like, know either. You're living for the for the Snapchat. Yeah. For the snaps. Like it's yeah. It's a lot. My daughter does like to take over my Snapchat. So <laughs> sometimes she'll be like, I guess so I can take over your Insta too. story. I'm like, well let's just stick with Snapchat for <laughs> now. Okay, so take us behind the scenes of New York Fashion Week. Like, what is it like going backstage? What is it like sitting front row at these shows of all these designers that you've admired and followed for all these years? Once you're there, it's just the music's on and the yeah. models are walking and I feel like it's just very inspiring for the new season. I mean, we're usually watching clothes that are going to be out, you know, for the spring yeah. this time. Yeah. But it just gets you excited for the next season and just what's to come. So yeah. I think the music is a huge part of that too. And when a show has like really good music, yeah. usually people are talking about that afterwards. Like, wow, that was that just really went with the collection and the vibe of the styles. So true. What are some of the favorite some of your favorite trends from last season? And also, what are you expecting to see this season? I liked a lot of the pattern mix that we saw last in spring. Well, spring, spring but for, for fall. fall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I feel like I'm going to be wearing those type of styles yeah. for fall. But I don't know. I feel like... I feel like I've been more open to wearing more color lately. Before I'd be like, oh no, it's not gray, it's not black. Right. I'm like more open to it now. <laughs> you're so. gravitating to it now. Yeah. yeah. So. I've noticed that. I've actually yeah, really I'm noticed like, that. Yeah, I'm a little brighter lately. You're, you're getting a little riskier. <laughs> <laughs> I love Stepping it. Stepping outside, yeah. So. I love it though. I love that you're like, you're really taking risks now. And I mean, you've always had amazing style, but you're really like taking risks and like sometimes wearing red. Out. Yeah, I noticed that. I saw a crochet halter top yeah. on your Instagram. So with all of the shows, all of the events, all of the meetings you have to take, how do you plan your schedule for Fashion Week? Um, I really try to, I guess, prioritize as far as if I really try to do, if there's a presentation or a meeting in the same area, then I really try to do those at the same time. You don't want to miss things either. So I think it's just really planning ahead and just making sure I'm there on time. And yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Ugh. That can be, you'll say a mile. You're like, oh, no worries. I'll be there in five minutes. And it's a half an hour. Yeah. So. Ugh, yeah. So just making sure I plan ahead. 
And do you have help in doing that? Like help getting around, help organizing everything? Um, my husband's coming with me this season. Last time I went, you know, and we all hang out. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but he's coming with me, so he'll help more with getting the photos and just making yeah. sure I'm organized that way. Um, but Uber is like the main thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, I'm like, I walk when I can, but <laughs> like, I gotta go now. So. Yeah. And it's Mainly tough because yeah. like all the cameras are there outside the shows and yeah. you want to look photo ready and you don't want to be like sweaty. Yeah. And or you have like load. a duffel bag and yeah. yeah. Or during winter, I it's, mean, you can't walk freezing. for more than a block without yeah. turning the ice. So yeah. It, it Uber, was crazy. Uber. Yeah. <laughs> totally for the Uber. So let's go back to the beginning. What made you want to start your blog? I was following a ton of wedding blogs. Like I was stalking just all the ones just for inspo for my wedding. I would get like song ideas from there. Um, and then afterwards we got featured on Green Wedding Shoots, which was one of my favorite so cool. blog, wedding blogs at the time. People were emailing me asking me different questions about my dress or just different and my husband was like, this would be kind of fun if we just started a blog with just talking about, like, outfits. I mean, uh, obviously, so it we were his gonna, idea. It was, yeah, honestly, it was his idea just because he knows how to build a website and he uh, knew how to help me in that sense. But, and he also got a brand new camera. So he was like, uh, and I can practice my camera <laughs> skills. So I was like, okay, that would be fun. Like, yeah. Let's, yeah, okay. And I think I was, I followed some bloggers. I just didn't really know what it all took. So I was right. like, okay, this will be fun. Like, help me, you know. I mean, obviously it wasn't going to be a wedding blog, but that's kind of where we got the idea of like, oh, this, like people are interested in reading, like just like we were. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of just like, oh, let's try it. That'll be fun. That's and, so cool. Yeah. What was your wedding like? So my wedding was all outdoor and very like, I guess, woodsy. I don't know. Yeah. Like I wore, yeah. you know, my hair was down. It was just very simple. And yeah. A lot of we did a lot of DIY like we did a lot of ourselves that's and so cool. that's why the blogs really came in because they gave me so many good ideas for like binding the menus and just yeah. different things like I didn't have a blog at the time so I had a lot of extra time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I was working full-time but at, at night we were like okay we, we gotta DIY sew <laughs> I'm just oh kidding. my god that's so cute though no we were that's, like that's, intense yeah but that's I think that's so cool because it makes your wedding that much more personal yeah it like, was personal. super like, personal yeah, yeah that's awesome yeah so it was a lot of fun but just the those following those blogs really came in handy during that time so yeah, yeah. okay cool so thanks hubby for uh, <laughs> yeah getting this he's whole like my right started. hand man. <laughs> that's so nice yeah oh my gosh so with blogging it started as a hobby for you mm -hmm. it started as something fun to do with your husband um when did you really start taking it seriously and when did you make the decision to leave your job and actually do it full-time as your career I think when I started realizing there was an industry behind it and an economy behind it, yeah. I got more strategic. I realized, okay, this is really fun. I'm more flexible. Jaden was five at that time. So I was like, it would be really nice if I could be more flexible with her and my schedule. And I think I was just really motivated to be like, if I can make a living out of this, how would I do it? Or, you know, just mm -hmm. really researching and figuring out. Um, and so we just had a lot of late nights where we're like, we're going to be posting five days a week. We just really committed to like, we're going to do this. Like, let's not just like post when we want to or yeah. we really committed to it when we decided like, let's try to grow this. Yeah. That was about a year and a half of doing that. And then it was to the point where I was like, well, it's time for me to leave because it was, I was missing out opportunities during the day that I just right. couldn't do because right. I was at my full-time job until six every night. So it just was, it made the most sense. And Jaden was really happy too because it was the summer that she was out of school and I'm like okay oh, that's awesome. I'm working from home now and she was like I'm so oh, so she, she was really happy yeah and, yeah she was really happy so that made it all the more worth it yeah that's so cool so you post five times a week well not the last two days. <laughs> get rid of bashing I'm like okay I need to yeah yeah but normally we do like to post five days a week but don't quote me on that because the last month has been three days a week. I feel you. I'm like, this is my posting schedule. And then yeah. People are like, where's the post? It like, like, doesn't go up till midnight. Yeah. It's like the next day's post. Yeah. I it feel was, you on that. It's been a little crazy at our place lately, just getting ready and, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to prioritize right now on Fashion Week. And yeah. Like, yeah. For sure. So, but posting that much normally, how do you come up with that much content all the time? Where, where do you get your ideas from? How do you find that much time to shoot and write and post? How does that work? So we definitely have planning meetings once a month, which is me and my husband yeah. at dinner. <laughs> so cute. So cute. I love We're that. like, this is our planning meeting. <laughs> um, no, but we definitely look at the calendar and figure out what are we doing for the month. And we shoot everything usually on a Monday morning for the following week. So uh, okay. 
okay. I already know what photos I have. Usually it's not written until, you know, a few days before. Yeah. Um, but that's mainly the thing that's really helped us is just planning ahead. It's just yeah. been super helpful. Yeah. And there are times where you look at your schedule and you realize, oh, I don't have posts ready for those days because you don't, you don't think about, you know, the gap that you have right. for something else. Right. Um, so yeah, just planning ahead has been hugely helpful. So you're a mother, you're a wife. <laughs> How do you balance having such mm. a successful career, being an entrepreneur and a successful family life? I think it was a lot crazier to be honest when, Anthony and I were both working full time and doing the blog on the weekends. Jaden didn't really feel it that much, I don't think, because she, we would just stay up really late. She would go to bed and we'd be up till 2 a.m. like yeah. just working just before, you know, we got the next day, went to work. Um, so now it's, I guess it's the same because <laughs> yeah. we still stay up late. We yeah. still work really late at night. Um, but Jaden, we're at literally every one of Jaden's activities and I'm not missing things because of work before right. I had to, just because, you know, you have to be at the office certain days. Right. Um, so I think that I've been just so much more balanced since doing this, just because I'm able to make my own schedule. Yeah. And it's been such a blessing in that way. So. That's so nice. And do you think being a mother actually helps you because you have to oh, yeah. schedule everything out? and Definitely. And that's, I think, the main driver for when I realized that, like I said, before I left, I was like, I could really make this my job. Yeah. Like, how do I do this? Because the main goal was like, I could be more flexible for Jaden and I don't have to miss her class parties right. and different things that like were really important to me and still right. are. So I yeah. love how you prioritize her too. Just last night, there was like a Revolve party for a Wild Fox launch and yeah. we planned to meet there and hang out. And then you text me, you were like, oh my gosh, I have a parent meeting in school. Yeah. And I think, I think that's so charming about you. Yeah, and, and you know, it is tempting sometimes to miss her things because yeah. there are there are things that I, you know, have to go to or like different events, but I really have to make sure she knows that like, Hey, you're first and yeah. my job is second to be yeah. like fully honest. So I definitely just have to prioritize that so that she remembers when she's older, like, okay, my mom was there for things, even though she did work a lot, Absolutely. And, you know? So I love that. I have baby fever, so she's like... <laughs> I'm not healthy. And Gina's nine, by the way. She's not, like, small. <laughs> yeah, she's nine, and she's gorgeous, and she's, like, she's a model like this one. No, she's, she's oh, so sweet. She's so sweet. So this is a question I think a lot of aspiring bloggers want to know. What was your greatest challenge the first year of blogging, and what are your greatest challenges now? I think the first year was trying to figure out, like, what I wanted from it, and... I think really just managing my schedule because I did feel like I was missing out on different events and different meetings that I just couldn't have in LA that I was I'm like, oh, sorry, I get out at six. And they're like, well, our showroom closes at five. So, so I think that that was really hard for me during that year when I was yeah. like, oh, this is exciting. I'm doing a growing more. And, but I was just, I felt like I was missing out on those opportunities. Yeah. So that was hard, but I mean, it didn't, it wasn't like the end of everything, but I mean, it was a struggle at that point. Yeah. Um, now I think it's just, I think it's the same thing goes back to like really organizing my time just because there's times where I feel like I'm running around all day and I'm like, yeah. what did I even get done? Uh -huh. So and now I'm really trying to like put, okay, when I have to go to LA for meetings, really try to schedule all those meetings that day and not have one meeting a day, mm -hmm. five days a week. And yeah. I'm driving everywhere. And yeah. so I think just trying to batch out and like really, because I think at the end of the week, I'm like, what did I... <laughs> I have my post ready. I got things done, but it's like you don't feel like you're making all the extra progress yeah. you want to do. So I think that's just right now where I'm like, okay, I think I just need to really prioritize and like batch everything together. I think you're doing a really good job. Oh, thanks. I feel like. Well, Anthony's a huge help. So yeah. that is, yeah, he does a ton that sometimes just isn't seen because it just flows with the blog. But right, right. Yeah, he's hugely helpful. So, what advice do you have for bloggers that want to do this but don't have an Anthony? Yeah, I wasn't super familiar with websites, and there are definitely, like, if I really wanted to do it, though, I could have figured it out. Yeah. I just didn't really know, like, oh, th you can do this, and, right. you know, I was like, oh, okay. So I think I would just honestly watch tutorials yeah. or see if someone could just set up a website for me and just help me with a really basic website. I wouldn't even, you don't need to get a crazy website. Like, you yeah. just need to get it up and start posting, mm -hmm. um, and then just start posting really consistent content. I just don't think I would have, my post never would have been that great because it's like, just get a post up and just yeah. talk about something that you are really interested in. I mean, even I struggle with this sometimes too. It's like, oh, I don't want to post because it's not like, it's never going to be perfect. And that's like what you have to like release sometimes is yeah. just, you're like, oh, it's not the best. It's not the most like longest post ever. So why should I post it? But just getting the content up and talking about 
you know, what you want to talk about and what you want your brand to be about. Yeah. If you can't post five days a week, post one day a week and just commit to every Tuesday I'm going to mm-hmm. post and just stick with that so that your readers get used to what you're going to be posting and talking about. So. Absolutely. So let's talk about Instagram for a second. Yeah. Your Instagram, I mean, she has just like skyrocketed, <laughs> especially in the past, what, like six months or so. Yeah, you're I like think so. You're like killing it. Killing it. So what are some tips for people to like manage their social accounts? How do you have like a regular posting schedule for Instagram? How do you go about that? I really think you just have to post what you want to post. And I think before I was really stuck in this mindset of like, I have an outfit photo, then I have to have like a a scenery shot or I hadn't like I was planned out so much where my grid was like, oh, this is what I want to be like. Yeah. Now I just post on the go and like I post what I'm doing and I'm really trying to make people follow let that follow me know what my life. It's like yeah. watching a reality show. Yeah. It's just those are the accounts I like to follow. And so that's kind of what I've done with my Instagram over the last I think since March is when I'm like, you know what, I'm not gonna worry about the feed. I'm yeah. just gonna post what I want to post, when I want to post it. So I definitely do believe that posting times really help. And I use Iconosquare to mm-hmm. analyze my stats. It's just based on when you have posted and it talks about what your engagement rate has been based on those previous posting times. So I just plan out my day as like, okay, I do want to post at four o'clock yeah. or I want to post at two o'clock one day. So I do try to plan that. But for the most part, it's like, oh, I'm, this is what I'm wearing or yeah. you know, this is what I'm doing. So Yeah, so I feel like so many bloggers get so caught up in like, the feed and, and you know, um, outfit and then yeah. you know, shot an outfit. And, and sometimes it's hard because you're like, I don't have anything to put in the middle. Yeah. You're like, I'm not anywhere. So yeah. that was just hard for me. I was like, I don't know what to post in the, in the like, I, I felt like I was making up content to fill in. Right. But I was like, I wasn't really like, like super passionate about this? that. Yeah. yeah. So I just kind of was like, well, if I'm somewhere cool that's going to have a cool interior, I'll post it. But if not, I'm not going to worry about yeah. it. So I think that's really smart. And I think at the end of the day, people want to just see what you're wearing and like yeah. see your outfits every day. And, and I like, think, I think if you can just make people connect with you in your life, like they're yeah. going to want to follow you. So yeah, I, I think it's just figuring out what works for your audience. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, what's your morning routine like? We get up pretty early just because Jane does have to be at school in the morning, but also... I like to just have my coffee and kind of go over things with Anthony in the morning and go through emails before I take her to school. So that's my main morning routine. I don't think I have, I'm not like super, super scheduled with it, but it's just getting through my emails, at least to the point where like, I know there's no urgent ones. Right. Um, So I think that's like the main thing is before I take her to school. Emails, coffee, take her to school. When she's at school, then I gear down. I'm like, okay, what am I doing for the day? And yeah. And what time does she have to be at school? Uh, 7.30. So you get all of this done before 7.30? <laughs> yeah, so you're it's early. In bed sleeping. That's why she's <laughs> successful. What's your process for each blog post? Like, what, is, what does that look like? We use CoSchedule to plan out the posts, and you can make the drafts within. Um, so I do have to look at any collaborations I'm working on. Those usually have deadlines, so I have to make sure those yeah. are on the calendar. But the main thing is editing the pictures, getting those uploaded, figuring out how the story is going to line up. And Mm -hmm. then I write based on how like the story is like telling my outfit or like what we did. And I always try to start my blog post with like something personal about like what we did the day before, like what we're looking forward to, just so that people can relate to like what I'm doing at that moment. And I do schedule some of my posts, like I write them the week before. Yeah. But before I publish, I do make sure that it's like current or I'm not talking about something that's sold out or I don't know. So it just depends on those situations. But for the most part, it's it's not like I'm doing very extensive, really long blog posts. And then when you when you promote to socials, do you do that like the day of the post? You'll post it on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, so for Instagram, I will post that day and say, oh, I have a new blog post and it'll be in the morning just promoting the post. And I'll also promote to Insta stories and Snapchat and um facebook twitter pinterest all that as well mm-hmm. but that's on the other end as far as like i use buffer for that to schedule out those ones ah, which is helpful buffer yeah super smart this is a whole new industry like blogging mm-hmm. is like a whole new thing and i get asked this question all the time like it's all great for now where do you see this going do you see yourself blogging for a lifetime do you see yourself growing into other avenues maybe going into design where do you plan on taking this from here i think well we also have blogging tip section on my blog which is a weekly series where we talk about if you want to start a blog here's some tips to help you out with that um so i definitely see myself down the line providing more informational products yeah 
that's something I could see more of a long-term goal. Um, and I would like to do a collab design with a designer. Yeah. I think that would be amazing. Who's your dream designer to collab with? I don't know. I have way too many. Yeah? Top three? I feel like I would be leaving people out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to that one. <laughs> like, I'm going to be playing favorites here. I know. I know. Um, so hard. I guess even, like, jewelry would be fine. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. shoes or something very, like, accessible I would love to do. Yeah. But... I think the main thing is just being a resource and being a value for people to follow. And as long as you're providing that, as long as you have that audience, I don't think that's going to go away. Absolutely. And I don't think yeah. the internet is obviously going to slow down yeah. in that sense. But I do think more brands are putting more of a focus on working with influencers. Mm-hmm. And I think that's huge because if you're seeing the trends of brands and companies moving towards that and yeah. away from television and radio in that sense, then that's encouraging because Absolutely. it makes you feel like they understand that you know, we have real audiences that want to, you know, see what we're doing. And yeah. brands love that. So. Yeah. There's longevity in this. Yeah. It's good to know. Hopefully knock on wood. I know. <laughs> I'm actually going to knock on wood for that one. <laughs> okay. So at the end of each show, I have three questions I like to ask everyone. Mm-hmm. What are five tips you'd give for aspiring bloggers? Five? Yeah. I would say just get started. Like if you want to start a blog, don't talk about it. Just just figure out Jump how you're going to do it. Yeah, just do it. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just get it, get something up and post consistently. That's mm-hmm. huge. I think also brand yourself as far as what do you, what do you really love? Figure out what yeah. you want to talk about weekly or monthly and put that into your brand. It doesn't have to be strictly beauty, strictly fashion. It can just be what you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, be organized and plan ahead Yeah. Um, for sure. And don't give yourself excuses because it might not seem like you're making any progress in the beginning because in the beginning it was very slow for me. Mm -hmm. I think I was gaining like two followers a day on Instagram. Like it was like you're like, is this even doing anything? (laughs) But then you'll see progress. The people that aren't doing it anymore are because they stopped doing it. So you just have to keep trying. And maybe after if you, you do it hardcore for a year and you're like, this is not worth. This is not fun for me. Then, then you can stop. Right. But just you but have to really give it a year. good shot. It's yeah, a, yeah. So consistency and just stay in it for the long haul. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So this show is called the Happiest Hour. How would you define happiness? I think I'm the most happy is when I'm with my family and yeah. I don't know. I think finding that work life balance yeah. is huge for me because yeah. I am the most happiest when I'm like relaxed and not like overwhelmed with things to do, but then losing sight of like, what am I doing this for in the first place? So really just giving that like work-life balance, I feel like is a great, um, and my faith is huge to me as well. Mm -hmm. And it's huge to our family. So I think just really making time for like prayer in the morning and just different things that, you know, is important to me. Yeah. And last question, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give your 20 year old self? Actually, one of my professors gave me this advice, and it was that I was like, "What the heck is he talking about?" (laughs) But um, he, I was asking him about my schedule, and I was like, "Okay, this professor's a lot harder. This one's okay. Like, I probably won't have as much homework." And he was like, "Take the hardest one whenever you can, because it's only going to prep you more for your life after college. So whether it's your job or just, you know, conflict resolution, he's like, always take the harder class." So that's what I did. Started doing my sophomore year. Like I would rate my teachers online, and I would take the harder teacher. And really, a few of them I wanted to like rip my hair out because yeah. I was like, they're just like not with it. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're like they're just not trying to be helpful to the yeah. students at all. Um, but I feel like I did learn a ton during that. It's just like I think that would be great if you were 20 and you're in college to do again. Taking just the challenge. Because Don't take the challenges because yeah. it makes you definitely critically think. But in real life, there are no shortcuts. Yeah, right? that's the thing. You just have to put in the hard work. Yeah. So take the hard. Not if that's the greatest advice you want to hear, but <laughs> but that's that's real. <laughs> real that's life. Real life. All right, you guys. So thank you so much, Brittany, for coming on the yeah. show. I'm so excited, you guys. She's our first guest, and what a good one. I think you gave so many amazing tips to aspiring Aww, bloggers. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you at Fashion Week. Good luck yeah. prepping. Thank you. I I need all the help I can get. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. So layered necklaces, chokers, I'm sure you've been seeing them everywhere this year. Um, Sometimes it can be a little tricky knowing how to do it right. So this lady, my lovely friend Brittany over here from Thrifts and Threads is gonna teach you how to do it. So one thing about layering necklaces that's a fun tip to have is I have a few necklaces that already are connected. 
So it has the layered piece, but I mean, it already looks like there's two separate necklaces, but you can't tell when it's on just because they do stay laying nicely on your skin. I like that too, because then they wouldn't get like, I know, <laughs> they wouldn't get um, tangled yeah. as easily. So yeah, normally like with layering, sometimes it gets, it gets tangled, especially in the back, like by my hair. So layering with an already pre-layered necklace is super key. And what I like to do is just put a choker on over just to pull it all together. So it looks like three pieces and then just having a statement piece, it's easily just to pop around. And there it is. There's an easy layering tip. So I love this look. I think it's a really cute way to like dress up a basic blouse like this or even a dress like what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of having two necklaces that look like three. I think yeah. that makes it a lot easier. It's not as messy in the back like you were saying. And um, yeah, I'll provide links below. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys, and check out Brittany at thriftsandthreads.com for more fashion beauty tips. <laughs>